Gael, come downstairs please. What do you want from me, Dad? Pee Wee Herman creator Paul Rubens died at 70 today. Can you tell me all about him? Pee Wee Herman, the comic creation of actor and writer Paul Rubens, would often toss taunts of the schoolyard into his casual conversation. It was one of the characters' go-to bits. Why don't you take a picture? It'll last longer. That's my name. Don't wear it out. And, most iconically, I know you are, but what I'm edge? Of course, when it came to Pee Wee himself, with his tight gray suit, red bow tie, crew cut, rouge cheekbones and ruby red lips, what am I? Was the real question, it was the one he posed merely by existing. Rubens died Sunday of cancer at the age of 70. He was an actor, but for a long time, he tried to convince the public that Pee Wee was a real person, not a character. Folks didn't know what to make of Rubens' petulant man-child at first. Created in 1977, while Rubens was a member of the Los Angeles sketch troupe The Groundlings, Pee Wee was part prop comic, part Brad and part trickster spirit. There was something fearless in Pee Wee, something unapologetic and brash that took you a second to process. The character was very obviously and intentionally what folks used to call a sissy, but how could a sissy own the stage like he did? Bask in the spotlight like he did? Dad? How could a sissy so confidently and explicitly dictate the terms for his audience on how to experience him? I'll tell you why. The Pee Wee Herman show at the Groundlings Theater soon had Los Angeles hipsters lining up around the block for a midnight show that mixed puppets and parody with archival educational films, the precise fuel mixture that powered Rubin's later CBS Saturday morning show, Pee Wee's Playhouse. However, it was never Peter Pan, what he was doing. Yes, Pee Wee was a boy who never grew up. But he was more than that, he was one singular adult's remembrance of what it was like being a kid. Specifically, of those parts of childhood we pretend not to see in our own children, the narcissism, the selfishness, the utter lack of basic human empathy, the monstrous bits. In Pee Wee's Big Adventure, it manifested in his hilariously obsessive drive to recover his stolen bike, a quest which would cause him to trample on the feelings of friends like Amazing Larry, Lou Cuttell, and Dottie, for example daily. On Pee Wee's Playhouse. It took the form of gleeful admonitions to his viewers to scream real loud whenever anyone said the week's secret word. Spare a thought for the long-suffering parents who'd hoped that sitting their kids in front of the TV would allow them a moment's peace to finish their coffee. On 1988's magnificent holiday staple Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas special, Reuben zeroed in kids' ravenous greed for presents, turning Pee Wee into a monster who only reluctantly sees the light once guilted into it. Like Scrooge. He's a lot more fun to hang around with before his last-minute epiphany. Here's a picture of him. In 1991, Rubens pleaded no contest to indecent exposure in an adult movie theater. About a decade later, he was charged with possession of obscene material of a child under the age of 18, but later he pleaded guilty to a reduced, misdemeanor obscenity charge. He's pictured above on stage at Universal Studios in Universal City, California, in October of 2011. Here's another picture. A picture of Paul Rubin's persona of Pee Wee Herman was a petulant man-child, yes, but he was also a trickster spirit, a burst of joyous head that snuck his brand of anarchy into the mainstream. He's pictured above in Los Angeles in 2009. To watch Pee Wee was to re-experience childhood the way we'd forgotten it actually was, pure, concentrated, distilled to its essence, when riding your bike and playing with your toys and screaming real loud was all it took to fill a day. Pee Wee was a creature of impulse, anarchy and it which is probably why Rubens' frequent appearances on Late Night with David Letterman helped launch him to stardom. Rubens' silliness worked on a different frequency than Letterman's, Pee Wee was wilder and far less inhibited than Letterman could ever hope to be, and Letterman knew to play up his own touchy, a grieved discomfort at Pee Wee's hijinks for comedic effect. The two men vibrated at opposite ends of the comedic spectrum, but they worked together brilliantly. What happened in those interview segments? In those interview segments, Gael, which quickly devolved into Pee Wee's signature giggles, you laughed at Rubin's ability to take complete control of the experience, and at Letterman's entirely uncharacteristic willingness to give over the reins. In the coming days, our social media feeds will fill up with a lot of Pee Wee's greatest hits, Large March, Tequila, Jombie the Genie, Cherry, Rubin's extended and entirely improvised death scene in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, I'm a loner, dot, a rebel, and, of course, come on, Simone. Let's talk about your big bit. Me, though, I'll be putting on the aforementioned Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas special, because it will remind me of one of Rubin's most overlooked talents, his ability to sneak an artisanal blend of face subversiveness into the mainstream. That special injected a defiantly, yet matter-of-fact, queer sensibility into the CBS primetime airwaves of Reagan's America, the Del Rubio triplets.
Zsa Zsa Gabor, Little Richard, Annette Funicello and Frankie Avalon, Gady Lang, Charo, the L.A. men's chorus dressed up as a marine choir, anything else, and, most indelibly, Grace Jones's Green Gumby, drag singing a club mix of the Little Drummer Boy, keep your eye men to do that. Keep your dancing on the biker bar to tequila. The image of Rubens that I'll be holding closest to my heart over the next few days is of him rocking out in the background as Joan sings in the glare of the spotlight, because I swear you can see, in just the way he holds his body, the mischievous delight he's taking in what he's unleashing on an unsuspecting public, Grace Jones, ladies and gentlemen, delivered unto your living rooms, pulling up to the bumper of your cozy family holiday special, an entirely singular brand of weirdness served up to you hot and fresh, with a high, unself-conscious giggle, you may go back to what you were doing. Okay, Dad. Tito, please come downstairs. Yes, Dad. I want to show you some pictures of Paul Rubens, also known as Pee Wee Hermans. What's that picture? Paul Rubens, in character as Pee Wee Herman, after a performance of the Pee Wee Herman show on Broadway in 2010. And here's a video of Pee Wee Herman at the David Letterman TV show, but due to copyright, we're not going to watch it but you may watch it on your own if you like. And here's a picture of Paul Rubens and Essie Patham Merkerson on Pee Wee's Playhouse in 1986. Several actors of color were cast on the show. And here's a picture of fans in Los Angeles were remembering Mr. Rubens on Monday where his star appears on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Well, the last Dr. Leo gets grounded video title Dr. Leo misbehaves at Pee Wee Herman's funeral before the transition to TTLVRF 5000 is underway. We'll think about that. I'm going up back to my room now.